<coughs> Hello, <coughs> my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A and I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 260. And today is our lesson number 167. Please turn to page number 200, 260. And the problem that we are about to do is number 6. Well, actually, number 6 is, uh, is, is, is the one that I had initially planned to do. But before we do problem number 6, before we do problem number 6, let's play a little game. I want you to solve this problem first. Okay, I'm going to read it to you in the event that you have trouble reading my handwriting. It's a quantitative comparison question quantitative comparison where you have you are given two quantities and your your job is to compare them quantitative comparison and here is how the question goes it says the sum of the length sum of the length of two sides of an isosceles triangle is 9 so we know that two sides add up to 9 of an isosceles triangle it goes on to tell us that one of its sides equals 6 one of its sides equals 6 in column a we have the quantity which is the perimeter of the triangle and in column B we have 15. What I want you to do now is to pause the video, solve the problem yourself and then continue it. Do not continue watching it, solve this problem yourself one more time. We are given, given two bits of information about this, uh, about the isosceles triangle. We, we know that some of the two, some of the lengths, it should say lengths, not length. Some of the lengths of two sides of an isosceles triangle is 9 one of its sides equals 6 column A, the perimeter of the triangle, column B 15 I'll give you about 5-10 seconds to pause and unpause the video pause it, solve it alright, so we know that it's an isosceles triangle which means isosceles triangle means that two of the sides have to be equal and we also know that two sides add up to 9 and one of the sides has to be 6 so there are two possibilities one possibility is that the side that equals to 6 could be the side that equals to the other side which is also 6 but we are told that some of the sum of the length of two sides equals 9 so if these two sides are 6 the bottom one will have to be 3 because the sum of the two sides has to be 9 has to be 9 now if this were the case if this were the case, one is, one is speaking hypothetically, if this were the case, then the parameter would have been 6 plus 6 plus 3, 6 plus 6 plus 3, which is your column A, 6 plus 6 plus 3, which is 15, which is same as this guy, and the answer is C. I should point out that in the real exam, when a question something like this is given, three quarters of the people miss it. 75% of the people get it wrong. They get it wrong because they only do half the work. Half the people who get it wrong will stop probably at this juncture. Other half of the people who contemplate this, this possibility. We are told that one of the sides has to be equal to 6. So the other half of the people will sit there and put 6 here. And then the other two sides have to be equal to each other. Their sum has to be 9. Two, some, of the, some of the length of two sides has to be 9. One side is 6. Therefore, this side must be 3 because 3 plus 6 has to make 9. And this is, this is 3. This also has to be 3 because these two sides are equal. Now the fact that the longer side I'm showing here is a 3 and the shorter short side I'm showing here is a 6, you should get used to it by now as I uh, pointed, out, pointed out to you many a times, as I remind you every time, pictures on the GRE are not drawn to scale. You have no right to complain that how come the shorter side you're putting 6 underneath it and the longer side is 3 because it is not drawn to scale. That is why. It is not drawn to scale because the people who give you the GRE assume that you are a big boy now. They assume that you are a big girl. When you were not a big boy and not a big girl in the days of the high school, when you took the SAT, the pictures, all the pictures on the SAT 
are drawn to scale. If the picture is not drawn to scale on the SAT, they give you a caption, they give you a little uh, notice underneath it saying not drawn to scale. Here is just the opposite. In the GRE is the exact opposite. All the pictures are not drawn to scale. If the picture happens to be drawn to scale, they will point it out, drawn to scale. If they don't point it out, that means it's not drawn to scale. Those are the rules of the games. Okay, so had this been a scenario, had this been a scenario 3 plus 3 plus 6, 3 plus 3 plus 6, of course 3 plus 3 plus 6 is 12, which is less than 15, and the people who, who are contemplating this situation, they will say that the answer is B. Or else we know now, we know now that if this is possible, if this scenario is possible where if we could have 6 and a 6 on the top and 3 at the bottom, some of the two sides is 9, and it's an isosceles triangle, one other side is 6, we are meeting all the conditions, we are fulfilling all the conditions, one other side has to be 6, which is true here. It does not say, it does not say exactly one other side, that's the thing, they do not say exactly one other side, it just says one of the sides has to be 6. They did not say that it is impossible for two sides to be 6, they did not say that. So here, it is true, one other side, one other side is 6, is this one and that, this one or that one. The sum of the two sides is 9, and it's an isosceles triangle. So this is possible, and so is this. Do you understand? And had this been the case, then the, then, then the parameter would have been 12, in which case the answer would be B, but this is also possible. Because we are getting conflicting answer, the correct answer for this problem is D. The correct answer for this problem is D. That's all. That's it. We are done with it. Alright, we are done with it. That's the end of it. Now, I want to have a little fun. I want to have a little fun with you. I'm going to change the question now. Change the question, and now here's a new question. Listen carefully. So, here's, here's what's going on. So this is a brand new question. I'm making it up. Sum of the length of the two sides of an isosceles triangle is 9. One of its sides equals 6. And the question now is, what is the what is the possible value? What is the possible value, possible length, possible length? What is the possible length of one of its sides? Now, what I want you to do at this point. What I would like you to do at this point is turn to page number 122 in your page. Turn to page number 122 and 123 right now as I speak so that you can, so, so that you can understand what I'm talking about and listen very carefully. In the old JRE, in, oh by the way I forgot, completely forgot to uh, mention this part here. I would also like you to watch, I would also like you to watch, also watch quantitative comparison day 35. Just type in, just type in quantitative comparison day 35 along with my name it will make it easier just put in Keshwani and then quantitative comparison day 35 and watch that video that video is made, is about a quantitative comparison question which is from this book here the old book the 10th edition the 10th edition was the last edition that they had before they revised the exam last summer last August they came up with a brand new format of the exam this book is based on the old format but there are three types of questions that they have not touched. They are they're still the same. The all three types of questions that existed before, they carried on carrying those three types of questions as before. They have just added two new types of questions. That's all they have done. Let's count them, shall we? Let's enumerate them. We still have we still have the multiple choice questions. We still have the multiple choice questions in the new GRE, the revised GRE if you like. We still have the quantitative comparison question. I call them QC. I, I denote them with QC for quantitative comparison. We still have those. And we still have the graph question. The only difference is that now they'd like to call it the data analysis. Data analysis, the graph is the same thing. The graph question. Those have not changed. But in addition to these three, which is the same as before, they have introduced two new types. One is the open-ended question. where there are no answers to pick from and you just actually type in the, your answer, your, your exact answer. And the other one is more than 
more than one right answer. More than one right answer. More than one right answer. That's, those are the two new types. Two new types of questions. Which did not exist before. Before, in the old GR, you only, you only had multiple choice, quantitative comparison, and data analysis. Are you at page number 122? On page 122 and 123, you will find one of those two new types of questions where more than one right answers are there. On page 123, as you can see, it goes, it has 10, mul 10 answer choices. And your job is to make sure that you check mark every single one of the right answer there. Otherwise, you will not get credit. If they tell you which of the, which, which of the following is the possible, uh, possible length of the side, and if there are four possible lengths, and if you only mark three, you're not going to get partial credit of three quarters. You will get no credit. Similarly, on page 122, they give you A through G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven answer choices. And again, your job is to make sure that you mark all of those answer choices that apply. So here are the answer choices, okay? Just one more time. And if you can play the game properly, you will learn something out of it, and you will also try to have fun. Don't look at it as a as a as a as a, as a dread and as a chore. That is the that's the worst thing that you can do. So the question now is, what is the possible length of one of its sides, this particular triangle? We know that some of its length of the two sides. Of, we first of all we know that it's an isosceles triangle. We also know that some of the length of two sides is nine. And the third thing we know about about this triangle is that. One of these sides has to equal six. The question simply is, what is the possible length of one of its sides? And here are the answer choices. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It goes all the way from three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, and six. Again, what I want you to do, if you don't listen to me and if you keep on watching, then you're not going to get much out of it, trust me. Because once you know the answer, then the game is over. You cannot go, uh, you cannot go and then do this question uh, from French if you already know what the answer is and how it is done. It, it, it kills the enjoyment. It kills, it kills the fun. Look at it as a fun, as I told you. I want you to pause the video one more time, do this problem, and when you have the answer, you can resume it. Okay? Very quickly, here's the question. I'm going to give the question the way it will appear in the exam. You will be told that some of the length of the two sides of an isosceles triangle is 9. We will be told that one of its sides equals to 6. And the question simply is, what is, what, what is, it should say, you see it's a good thing I read it here. It, it should say what is, it's a good thing I read it. What is one of the possible, what is one of the possible length, oh sorry, what is the possible, oh no sorry, it was right. It was correct the way it was. What is the possible length of one of its sides? All right, I'll give you five, five, ten seconds to pause and unpause. All right. Well, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven answer choices. Two of them we already know because we already did. Two, we already did two of those, which were these. We had a triangle. We had a triangle where we put the 6 at the bottom and we had a 3 and a 3 because the sum of, some of the two sides has to be 9. So we, we already contemplated that scenario and then we had another scenario where we had a 6 here and 6 here and 3 here. Some of the two sides is 9 and some of the two sides is 9. It's an isosceles triangle, it's an isosceles triangle and one of the sides is 6 which means 3 is possible and 6 is possible. Now, if you stopped at that, if you just stopped at that and that was all you did, I'm giving you a chance to pause it one more time and do a proper work because there is one more answer. If you want to do that, go ahead and do that because once I tell you, it's over. You should have asked yourself, it, could, it couldn't possibly have been that simple if I'm making this much fuss about it. Pause it one more time if you have to and redo it. There is one more answer. Here we go. Here's the last possible scenario. Okay, listen very carefully. We know one of its sides has to be 6. So you can put 6 at the bottom if you like. And we know that the sum of the length of two sides, sum of the lengths of two sides, the sum, their sum, their sum has to be 9 and they have to be equal to each other. Which means 
they could also be each four and a half. Voila. Four and a half plus four and a half equals nine. Four and a half plus four and a half equals nine. And something like this would be considered a difficult question for the GRE. It will appear as a difficult question because the vast majority of the people will blow this question. Not because it involves complicated math. It does not involve complicated math. You just have to think all the possibility. That's what they're testing in this exam. They're trying to see if you can concentrate and contemplate and think in a broad manner. Your view should not be parochial. Oh boy, I should not have used that word. And I don't have my, oh, I do have my vocabulary list here. Parochial was the word that I used. Did we ever learn it? Oh, we did. What do you know? What the hell? P-A-R-O The word is pronounced parochial even though it has C-H in it. Even though it has C-H in it, it is not pronounced parochial, it's parochial. And it was on day number 55 that we covered it. So we'll end our video on that note. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary also, you can just type in my name Kashwani and then type in vocabulary, day 55, and learn this word. I just use it in the context, what I said is that your view, your outlook on the GRE should not be parochial. You look it up, you learn it, and you figure out how I used it, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is when I will actually do the problem that is given to us, which is the problem number six, which I never got to it. Obviously, I'm not doing it right now because it's already too long of a video. Tomorrow I will do the actual problem, problem number six, on page number 260, okay? Bye now.